Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia, Michelle, and the road to Melody Festivalen is paved with greatness, right? I'm so excited today because I'm gonna be talking to Daughter, who we love, you know, and I gotta ask, okay, you're back. <laughs> what makes everyone want to come back to Melody Festivalen? Because some national selections, you know, people <laughs> go, they do it once, and they never ever go back. But with Melody Festivalen, it's like, oh, I get to do this again? Like, yay. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's so much fun. Oh my God. It's the most fun thing you can do here in Sweden, I believe, <laughs> as an artist. So why why don't we want to go back? <laughs> okay. And I mean, it's already underway. So now your uh, heat or del tabling is, you know, kind of stacked, like you're coming back, everyone was anticipating you, but you've got some other heavy hitters in your heat. What does it feel like to be kind of competing, in a sense, against folks that you know, and also are sort of big names in Sweden? I mean, my heat is quite difficult. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm nervous, because I'm not the kind of person that gets nervous, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, I believe. <laughs> but it's fun, it's challenging. Well, I have to ask because once upon a time, you were a debut artist at Melody Festival and, and that was 2018, right? Yeah. yeah. So what does it feel like in, you know, because now with Melody Festival, and we do have the people that obviously those of us in the bubble, we know who you are already, but how does it feel? Can you kind of go back to 2018 and think about how it felt to be hopping into something like Melody Festival and uh, as kind of a first timer? Um, it wasn't really what I expected. It was much more, uh, I mean, I I had never before been on a stage with like 10,000 in the audience and, you know, 3 million people watching. Uh, so for me, it was like uh, either I would feel afraid or I love it and actually I love those three minutes that was the best three minutes of my life <laughs> so yeah I that that was the best thing well so you're a little bit different time has has gone on so the artist that you were in 2018 is a little bit different than the artist that you are now how have you evolved in your music, would you say? And, you know, I, I asked people this a couple of years back, um, Laurel and Paul Ray, where I was like, how has uh, parenthood maybe changed the way that you write or the themes or maybe how has it not? Yeah, I mean, uh, since I got a child, I feel like I feel lyrics so much more like they they really mean something. Uh, I mean, as a listener to other songs or songs that I've heard like a million times before, suddenly it just became, wow, I really understand this song now. <laughs> so that, that's quite strange. Um, and I also feel like I've landed as a person. I feel a little bit more uh, mature, grown up. Uh, I've always felt like I'm still a child. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but as a songwriter, um, maybe I feel like I've I've went back to be a little bit more organic and down to earth, actually. So yeah, I'm like going in a circle. <laughs> it feels like <laughs> where I started from. You know, it's interesting because you're an artist. You really are like a singer songwriter. You sort of work on on your own pieces. Uh, would you say? when you're not kind of creating, what do you do? I mean, like I I like go deep into reality TV and I will say I did watch all of Love is Blind Sweden. I don't know if you've watched it, but yeah, when you're not creating, what are you yeah. doing? What do you kind of do to unplug and relax? <laughs> uh, I do a lot of yoga actually. And I love to be in the nature, taking long, long walks, uh, hang out with friends, uh, I love to do like interior uh, stuff and build stuff in my home. <laughs> we built like two beds uh, here and a table and stuff. So um, yeah, I love to do creative stuff even when I'm not like working. <laughs> so I'm still creative all the time. 
<laughs> okay, okay. It makes sense. It totally makes sense. Now, this song you're bringing to Melody Festival, and I've heard some of the interviews where you've talked about like, oh, you know, like I feel like I'm getting a little bit back to my roots. When you were sort of uh, in the creative process of that song, can you give us a little window into like maybe what was like the inspiration point? Was it the melody that came first? Was it the lyrics or the theme? Actually, I just sat down by my piano at home and the first thing that just came out of my mouth was, it's not easy to write a love song. <laughs> and that's the title of the song. So it started with that and then it just, like flow out of me i don't know where it came from uh i think i had some inspiration from maybe adele uh or who else mm, i think it was i was so into a, a, a little kind of melody that i uh, at that time i wrote all my songs with the same kind of melody structure <laughs> so that song is also that structure and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna release more songs in the same vibe so yeah i don't know what it was actually <laughs> to tell you a secret uh that day when i wrote started writing like the embryo of the song that, um smash into pieces were in my home studio together with my boyfriend Dino and he worked on some song and uh, I was in the other room felt like oh I also want to write some music <laughs> so I started writing this song so that was crazy that we were in, like in the same place uh, making songs. <laughs> that, that's so cool and it's interesting so I had actually had a conversation with one of the artists that's vying to represent Serbia this okay. year uh, at Eurovision so uh, she's competing at PESMA's uh, Erovisu uh, to hopefully represent Serbia. And one of the things that she noted, one of her creative partners, and since you mentioned it, I'm going to ask you the same question, but she wrote her song and really works a lot with her husband. Yeah. And they live together, of course, and all of that. What is it like sort of having a partner that you you love and you're partnered with, but you also sort of work together in a way? Yeah, what is that? what is that like? <laughs> Yeah, it's quite odd. I mean, the thing is that you can be completely transparent. You can say anything to your partner. And that's the same thing in the studio. You can be like just throwing out anything you think. <laughs> so it can be quite unprofessional and it can be really hurtful too. So some of my songs is really is actually based on that kind of, you know, arguing in the studio vibe. <laughs> Because it is really hurtful. I don't know why it is, but when you're in a creative process, it's really hard to to hear that. No, that idea is really bad, or you're not a good writer. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, so I was also I was gonna ask too. I'm like, who wins? You know, who gets the final word? Because it's like you know, he can have his own projects where he could get the final word. You know, with them. Yeah. So who yeah. you know who gets the final word word? You know, maybe in the like, no, I like that note. This is what we're doing. We're saying it this way. I'm not saying it any other way. Who gets yeah. the final word? I mean, it depends on the day and who it feels like, who is already more into the song from the beginning, like who loves this the most. Uh, so then you get a feeling of, okay, it feels like this is his song more than mine. And I just okay, I, I don't care. Let's just do whatever you like, just to get finished, kind of. But sometimes we love it, the, the, I mean, both the same way. So that can be really difficult. And then maybe it's my fight. I mean, if it's for me, if I feel like this is really my song, shouldn't I decide what it should be like, you know? <laughs> So it's hard. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, not for the faint of heart, but can beget some real beautiful products out of that. So so I think sometimes in the conflict, you can kind of create something really, really powerful and strong and something that people can resonate with. Now, I know you can't tell us what you're doing on the stage. It's totally fine. Totally yeah. fine. But, you know, <laughs> what do you feel like you want the audience to feel when they are experiencing those three minutes from you? I want them to feel uh, uh, like a 
dynamic change of feelings like uh, I want them to feel the same feelings that I have like the frustration um, the uh, the uh, the pure love of like being in love with someone and and still frustrated you know because of all the struggles <laughs> that you can have in a relationship um, yeah so and I also want them to feel like excited what is, what is gonna happen now what's next oh this is interesting so I'm trying to like build that vibe uh, but you never know maybe I created a sleeping pill you never know <laughs> <laughs> well I highly doubt that that was what the product is going to be I think we're all very uh anticipating what you're going to bring us and so a lot of people know I like to talk about the clothes I like to talk yeah. about the styling okay yeah. and so I know again you can't tell us what you're wearing but can you give us a clue like maybe what were the conversations with your stylist like on what you wanted to wear and how you sort of wanted to look on the stage? Mm. <clears throat> so hard when you can't really tell anything. <laughs> but I really wanted to have something unique, uh, create my own style, something that we haven't really seen yet, but still very modern, uh, like something that everyone wants to wear. <laughs> so that's what we created. <laughs> Okay, well, hopefully it's not something that we can get in stores immediately. Hopefully it will inspire yeah, things exactly. that maybe maybe we can get in stores come the fall, uh, yes. perhaps. Um, <laughs> so one thing I had to ask about is, look, I mean, Sweden, y'all are just burning it up at Eurovision. Do you feel <clears throat> like Sweden could do a double and win Eurovision on home turf? Do you feel like there's that energy like floating around Melody Festival and where people are like, eh, you know, you yeah. might be able to do this again. Yeah, I mean, I feel it, but you, <laughs> who will do it? <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've also been thinking about it. It would be really cool if we did that. <laughs> Win twice, you know. I've always said I was like, if there are two countries that could probably pull a double, at the Eurovision Song Contest, it's Italy and Sweden. I'm like, those <laughs> those are the countries that I'm like, if if it's gonna happen in the modern era of Eurovision, those are the countries I would be looking at. So I feel like you are such an inspiring, like so singer, songwriter and creative in the space. And I would just love to hear, you know, for you, what is kind of maybe a piece of advice that you've heard that helps you when you're kind of approaching anything creative in your creative process? Mm, oh, uh, you mean like some advice that someone else could like enjoy? <laughs> uh, what can it be? Um, I always feel like cause I'm, I'm never nervous when I'm uh, when I know that I'm going to have like a, a really great session with, I mean, if I write for another artist, I'm never nervous. I, I, I always think that even if I'm going to like have a bad day, uh, I'm not, I'm not bad. I mean, it, it's just a bad day. So it can happen to e everyone, you know? So I, I just feel like uh, it's so hard to describe. I, I, I'm feeling like I go with the flow. <laughs> kind of. I, I just, I'm I'm never like disappointed on myself and you know push down myself. I'm al I, I'm always thinking like I'm trying to talk to myself like I'm my best friend. Like the words I'm telling myself is very friendly. Like it's okay, you know. Yeah. So and that's uh, that's very. I mean, <laughs> it's a good feeling because before I was really hard to myself. I was talking to myself like really, you know in a bad way uh, and that doesn't help it feels just bad you know so i'm always trying to be kind to myself i think that's the most important key uh, and allow myself to to be bad some days and be really good some days and just appreciate it i hope y'all all heard that be kind to yourself you know big yourself up I feel inspired by that. Okay, yes. this is my signature question. I yeah. ask everyone this question, and I, I'm trying to think about the best frame for this, but you know, you have a very distinct sound, I would say. Is there, and I'll, I'll make it broad, is there a 
former Melody Festival and song or Eurovision song that you kind of go, hmm, I want to take that song and remix and put like the Dotter spin on. Is there a song that you could think of? Like not to like steal like, oh, I wish I wrote it, but like I could take that song and kind of put my own unique stamp on the track. Yeah, I actually <clears throat> did that once already. <laughs> so it's out on YouTube. It's, uh, you know, the Duncan Lawrence song. Uh, what's it called? Arcade. I, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so that song, I re I made it like, a, I, I re redone it. I did a cover of it. Uh, and that felt really like it could have been my song, actually. When I... When I hear it in my head, some some days I just like, oh, what song? What what of my songs are that? <laughs> that kind of feeling. <laughs> no, I love that, and thank you for playing. You know, my signature question game. Thank you so much for talking with me today, and best of luck on the stage. Break a leg. A lot of people are rooting for you. Thank you so much, <laughs> and thank you for having me. <laughs>